Now, this is everything in my, on my paper, more or less, has got a bit of colour on it. Uh, and it's getting to the point where it's all up here is drying off. And um, before it, it actually does, well, I can, I'll have to dampen it again, I think, before I lay the next lot of colours in. And I think that will apply to everybody. But it does have a, already a, a sort of sense of recession, if you can see that, even though it's very pale. Could you remind us how you did the bit of light coming off the moon on, into the water? You mean here? Yes. I didn't use any colour virtually there, apart from a very bit of pale bit of yellow going down there. Right, okay. The same colour as I've got up here, the original pale wash of the yellow I've used down here in the water. Okay. It's not actually white paper. And is the um, yellow, is it the oreolin just very, very dilute? Well, it's, it's, yes, it's quite watery. Um, I put a little bit of something in to warm up the oreolin because the oreolin, remember, which is your le equivalent of lemon yellow, is a little bit too cold. So I actually, you can put a bit of raw sienna in it or okay. even a little bit of gamboge in it, but be careful. You don't want it bright yellow. You don't want it custard no. yellow, but you just want it to be, it, it doesn't look as though his is a very, it's, it may well be because there's some pink in there. I don't know. I can't see on mine. Mine doesn't look very pinky. Um, but I did warm up the yellow fraction, so it's quite. It works nicely with the blue. Okay. Well, thank you. Okay. Thanks. Okay, the next stage. I would like to develop the sky a bit. My sky is now dry. <laughs> um, so. And if I put wet paint on there, what's going to happen? You'll get an edge. Yes, I will get an edge. So if I want to try and keep this kind of watery, fusing look, it, I think I'm going to have to apply a bit of clean water um, over the areas that I want to work on. So I'm going to just apply some clean water back over the sky area. Um, Just in places, really, uh, and over around the moon area, because I'm going to put some more slightly strong, uh, stronger uh, yellow around there, and yeah, just down here. Now, if I look at it from the side, it looks very wet. So again, like I always do, I would probably just uh, blot it a bit so that it's not as wet. That probably be all right. So it, it's damp now, and now I feel I can go back with. Uh, I'm now going to go back with the same blue that I used initially for the sky. I'm going to go over it again with the same color, and because I'm, it's layered. It's coming up a little bit darker, it's, and it's fusing in with the color nicely because it's damp. I imagine that if Turner did this outside on in situ, I'm not sure that he would have done. I think he probably, because if it's moonlight, he would have remembered it and come back and painted it in the studio. Um, but he would probably work quite quickly. So I'm putting little bits of blue in here and there on top of the yellow and then back down here on the right hand side and taking it down to the mountain bit. Now here, so where it's looking like it's getting a bit a wee bit of an edge, I'm going to take my my damp brush, which has just got had water on it, I'm just softening it so um, it's there isn't any obvious line. It look and it goes into the yellow nicely. Yeah? yeah. So soften it with a bit of water and the damp brush. Don't try just putting more colour over it.
And then I'm going to go up to the top of the picture where it's a bit darker. And again, put in some more blue. Now it does look as though there's blue going over the top of the yellow. So it's providing your blue is very pale and I've made mine virtually like water. Um, you can do it over the yellow without it, you know, making the yellow too green. And again, I'm softening with my brush, my other brush. Now, this bit of the sky down here, near the mountains, in my painting is a little bit warmer, the colour. And the blue has got a little tiny bit of red in it, I think. So I'm just added that the smallest, I mean, smallest amount of alizarin you can possibly imagine to it. So it's made it slightly warmer, not much, hardly, hardly at all. Like, you know, yeah, just I mean, it's many, yeah, well, to the sky color, yes, but very small amount, yeah. Now this is where you can go over the mountain range bit with your wash of whatever color you want to use over there. I'm going, I'm, I've used that, well, I'm going to make, go back and use the, the kind of greeny blue because it, it looks quite greeny, the color he's used um, at the bottom of the, the mountain range. It's, a, you know, it's, it's got something in it that's making it more blue. And I'm also going over the mountain itself, just with a bit of the same colour. So it's making it a little bit stronger, but leaving those light bits at the top of the mountain I'm talking about. Tricky. because I didn't put any colour on the, the bit under the moon, I can now use this wash that I'm using for the mountains over there because it's coming up quite pale. And that's all right.
can cope, put, put on of the sky and the mountain range, okay? That's what I've done, second wash, to sort of darken up bits. Uh, so I'm now going to work on this bit, the edge of the lake here. And it, it looks like he's taken some, some of the color he used over here, which is sort of brownie, and he's put some of that here and there. It's very neutral brown. I mean, it's, you know, it's got blue in it. Uh, and I think you could also maybe suggest this bit of the jetty on the right hand side and eat, I would leave the foreground. We'll do that at the end. So the edge of the lake, I think we need to sort of kind of establish that. Now, it's not a straight line. It's it goes from if you look at my paintbrush while I'm talking about this, because this is important, please. It goes from down here below where the reflection of the buildings is round so it goes up a bit then it goes i think uh yeah round that mountain range and at the back here and round but there's also a bit of something mm -hmm. here so it, it looks as though there may be a bit of lake beyond a bit of bit land that sticks into the lake and then a bit bit of water beyond it so don't do it as just a straight line across the middle, otherwise it won't have the feeling of it being a lake. Yeah, okay. I think, again, it will be worth dampening that area that we're working on, because if you don't dampen it, you're going to get, you know, sort of hard lines. So if you just draw in with water or damp water, the area where you're going to paint next, which is this bit around the edge of the lake. I mean, literally, it just needs to be your, your brush needs to be a bit damp. I think we'll include that jetty bit on the right hand side or whatever it is. And, and then go and put the colour in. So you're working again on a damp surface. And I'm going to put some green underneath here as well, where the brown hits the water. Oops, on brush. And you can do little uh, horizontal short strokes on the water, because remember the surface of the water will be broken up slightly. Uh, 
and underneath where this reflection is, there can be short, jaggedy lines as well. I hope you can see this. Yeah. Can you well, find this you made the brown color for the churches, for the city? Yeah, this one here. Yeah. Yeah, I, I use, well, I use a bit of raw sienna or yellow ochre, whichever you've got, and I put a little bit of blue with it. Okay. You, and maybe even a bit of red as well, because it's it's a very soft brown. Ultra? It's Ultra, soft. not Russian. Sorry, Shelley, what did you say? Ultramarine, not Prussian, though. Um, yeah, I think ultramarine because it's warm, isn't it? Okay, thank Let's you. Let's try it out before you, you know, you go too far. Just see what it looks like. Okay. Now, it's quite nice that the sky area is still damp. And I'm going to go back and work on this area behind the, the town so that I'm building up the bluey grey green at the base of the mountains. There's a whole big sort of area here um, which goes all the way across. And that sort of, it's got a bit more bit green in it. This this is warmer at the top. What you're basically got to do is you've got to work the you're doing the areas of the in the middle distance, and you've got to make those a bit stronger than the, the tops of the mountains, which are paler and further back. Thank you. 